A very good morning to each and every one of you. We would like to extend a very warm welcome to our esteemed doctors, to all students and guests. We are here on the second day of this medical expo, which is for a humanitarian cause. Many of us have faced a lot during the COVID pandemic. A lot of troubles, tribulations came our way, a lot of repercussions, a lot of doubts in our minds that we hold. Today's session is basically going to be an experience that our key doctors are going to share with each one of us. We're also going to have the opportunity of asking questions. It's going to be a very interactive session. And as we begin, I would like to introduce and invite our key doctors present with us and would like them to take their place on the days. I would like to invite Dr. Sarvesh Savant, who's passed his MBBS from the Goa Medical College in the year 2013. He's completed his post-graduation in ophthalmology from Mumbai, done a retina fellowship from the prestigious Arvind Eye Hospital, Madurai, doctors into private practice and runs a clinic under the name Excel Vision Eye Care in Margao. Can we all put our hands together for Dr. Sarvesh Savant? I now take the privilege to welcome Dr. Vardhan Bohe, a general and laparoscopic surgeon. He is the medical superintendent at the RG Hospital, president of ASI, which is Association of Surgeons, Goa chapter. He's been into practice and has been practicing as a laparoscopic surgeon for the past 15 years. Can we have a thunderous round of applause as we welcome Dr. Vardhan Bohe. We also have with us Dr. Abhijit Shanbag, a pediatrician. He's completed his MBBS from the Goa Medical College. He's completed his MD from the Goa Medical College in the year 2017. Worked as a senior resident at GMC for two years. He's currently into private practice in Vasco. Doctor also runs two child rehabilitation centers, one in Vasco and one in Margao, under the name Pukar. He's currently the treasurer of the IMA Murmagao. Can we hear a round of applause as we welcome Dr. Abhijit Shanbag. We would also like to invite Hanin Kadar, a passionate mental health activist. She's done her Masters of Science in Clinical Psychology, Rajiv Gandhi University of Health Sciences, Bangalore. She's a practicing psychologist, founder of Ikikai, a mental health consultancy. She was the first to start Mangalore's rooftop mental health consultancy with an unconventional therapy room, set up amidst plants, accompanied by cats, fishes, away from the city, hustle and bustle. Once again, would like to request you all to give <laughs> Hanin Kadar a round of applause. We're also privileged to have with us Mohammed Yusuf Swaroop, Assistant Professor in Psychology, Acharya Institute of Graduate Studies, Bangalore, received two double promotions and completed his bachelor's by 18 years of age. He completed his master's when he was 20 years. Can we hear a round of applause as we welcome Mohammed Yusuf Swaroop. We're delighted and pleased to have with us Dr. D.V. Deshpande. He passed his MBBS way back in 1976. After passing his DDV from the College of Physicians and Surgeons Bombay in 1980, doctor started his private practice in Vasco and at Bandare Clinic in Panjim. 
He operates from his residential clinic at Taligao. Doctors usually frequented by patients from all across Goa. And like doctor says in his own words, more valuable than an award is the thank you that he receives through the saying Dev Bore Kuru by all his patients. Once again, a thunderous round of applause for Dr. Devi Deshpande. I would now like to request Mr. Robert Navraj to present a bouquet of flowers and a memento to our doctors. We would like to present a floral bouquet to Dr. D.V. Deshpande. Can we have a round of applause, please? <laughs> would like to request Mr. Robert Navraj to present a bouquet of flowers and a memento to Dr. Abhijit Shanbag. We'd also like to honor the presence of Dr. Sarvesh Savant by presenting him a bouquet of flowers and a memento. A bouquet and a memento to Dr. Vardhan Bohe. A round of applause, please. We would also like to welcome Hanin Kadar and present her a bouquet of flowers and a memento. A bouquet of flowers to Mohammed Yusuf Swarup. Students and to all our guests gathered, this event is for a humanitarian cause, for we say, together we can. The COVID-19 pandemic has led to a dramatic loss of human life worldwide and presents unprecedented challenges for all of us. The economic and the social disruption caused by the pandemic has, has been devastating. Many are particularly vulnerable because, of, because majority lack social protection and access to quality health care. Only together we can overcome the intertwined health and social and economic impacts of the pandemic and prevent its escalation. Amidst panic buying and frequent hand washing, we think this is a good time to hit the pause button and remind ourselves that together we can. Together we can fight the effects of the pandemic and come out strong and resilient. We can rise above all chaos, for together we can. Before we move on and into the proceedings of this Expo 2022, I would like to highlight the idea and the whole purpose of the Medical Expo. This has been the brainchild and an initiative by none other than Mr. Robert Navraj. Would like to request Mr. Nob Robert Navraj to come forward or come up on stage. And this entire idea has been worked upon and conceptualized by A Cube Group. And the person responsible is Abhilash Malagi. Do we have Abhilash around? I would like you all to give them a thunderous round of applause. 
It's taken a lot of efforts, it's taken a lot of work, it's taken lots that they had to put together to make this event a grand success. So once again, a thunderous round of applause for Mr. Robert Navraj and Abhilash Malagi of A-Cube Group. This event was to promote helpful opinions and foster a climate that encourages nuance, analysis and diversity in fighting the pandemic and rebuilding a new and a healthy tomorrow. The purpose revolves around a fight back to the side effects and disorders caused by the COVID-19 lockdown, along with an exciting opportunity and a platform that we all get in interacting with our doctors and listening to what our doctors have to tell us through the experiences that they have gone through. So as we move on, I would now like to request and hand over the podium to the doctors, as we would like them all to share their experiences with us. I would like to call forward Dr. Sarvesh Savant to come and share with us his experience. Hi, uh, good morning everyone. Uh, this is Dr. Sarvesh Savan. I'm a practicing eye surgeon from Margao. So basically we have passed the COVID waves, wave number one, two, three, and uh, so on. And I think uh, we are very much lucky, we are very much safe because of God's grace and divine prominence. Of, out of all the COVID affected patients, around 90% had a recovery. So I think we are very much safe now. Next is uh, we have gone through a very much difficulties during the lockdown fighting for the COVID virus infection and also the lockdown and its side effects, right? So basically each and every organ of us had been affected. Most common were I think eyes because of mostly com computers usage, mostly on computer classes and all for everyone. Almost all age groups have been affected, uh, maybe from children or adults, college going like you all and also old age people. Now go to see most common what it had started, the COVID, what we have learned from COVID was lectures online and all. So overall around 20 million students or adults are on computer screens every time. Now the question arises, does it affect your eyes using a continuous computer screen? The answer is yes, definitely. So the most common side effects or whatever you are experiencing because of a continuous usage are dryness of eyes and the second most common is getting a, a higher chance of getting a spectacle numbers. First of all, dryness of eyes is caused due to what? Whenever you are, we are using a computer or you are using a laptop or mobile, basically you are straining at that distance. So our eyes are basically re relaxed when we look at a distance object, but when we are looking at a nearby object, our eyes are strained at that distance. So it causes a lot of strain, decreased blinking. So what happens is you definitely eyes tend to become drier. You get at stinging sensations and all. And the second most common finding which we have, which we are experiencing now is a higher number of patients getting a spectacle number on, uh, on the patients who are continuously using computers and all. Now this basically happens because why? Our eyes have a power to change its focal length, right? So we can see for distance also and we can see for near. So, but our eyes are relaxed when we look at a distance object, whenever we are looking at a, more than six meters I mean, whenever we are looking at a nearby object or a, maybe a computer screen or a mobile screen, our eyes are strained at that distance. So a continuous straining at that distance, our eyes are working, our eye muscles are working to look at that distance. So whenever we are continuously straining, the eye muscles go into fatigue. So it gives a plus power and definitely a patient will get a negative power when we look at a distance object. Now overall scenario, we have learned like, what if we are getting a number? How it will affect the eye's health? So if you are using a specs number, that's okay. But if we don't use, what will happen? Is there any chance of getting blindness or how it will affect the eye health? Yes, it can lead to blindness, definitely not everyone, but it will depend upon how severe is the eye number, how more minus is the eye number. And 
how much whether you are using the specs or not. So overall, the w according to the WHO findings, in around 2000, around 20% of the whole world population used to have numbers. So basically a myopic number, that's a minus number. Which now has, in around 2022, has increased to around 33%. And the number is going on increasing. And now also in our OPD, we are seeing a higher number of patients coming and uh, we are finding out they are having a specs number, basically patients who are mostly on a computer screen. And the WHO is predicting in around 2050, around 50% of the patients, 50% of population will have glasses. So it's strange that almost half of the people will have glasses at around 20 to 2050. Now, how will you diagnose or how for an uh, adult or a children or a parent or a teacher, how they will diagnose that you are having a number. So basically when we all adults of us, we will be in a much better stage as compared to our children. Whenever we are driving, we will be having a blurry vision for distance or we are getting that tired feeling in the eye and all. But for a children, for a school going children, it's very difficult to find out. So basically children, what they will do is they will automatically get adapted to that. They won't know what is a normal vision. Whatever they are seeing, the close by vision, that will be normal. But for distance vision, they don't know what is the exact normal vision. So uh, the, most common where, the most common way where you can find out is um, uh, a teacher maybe, whenever a school going children is sitting behind, the patient will, the student will complain they won't be able to ride or they won't be able to see. Similarly, at home, a children will be like, hey, he'll try to go ahead to watch a television set. He doesn't do it on purpose, but what happens is if he's sitting behind, he can't see. So normal tendency is he'll try to go in front and try to see it. For all adults of us, uh, most common findings will be like burning sensations, stinging sensations. For children, one more thing is like they try to squeeze their eyes. They try to negate their number and they try to squeeze, okay, which normal population will call it squinting, but in medical terms, squints are different. It might be an inward or an outward squint, that is totally different. Squeezing of eyes is decreased aperture of the eyes, okay. Next is uh, your eyes might get tired feeling or burning sensations, itching sensations when you are on a computer screen. Now, how to find out or how to get rid of it. So most common is as, as a adult or maybe a parent or any of your relatives who are at home, who are small children, we have to try to find out whether they are having a number or not. Just show them any signboards at home from a distance, from individual eyes. Try making them reading it. Also for a TV and all, whenever the children are seeing, try to make them sit a little behind. Now how to get rid? The most important thing is uh, you have to get it checked if you have a number or not. The, even the American Academy of Ophthalmology states, once in a year you should go and check your eyes. Just see if there is a number or not. If there is a number, please use it. There is a normal tendency or people, some parents and all, they have a myth that uh, my child, if they start using glasses, he'll be dependent on it throughout the life. So they are not giving glasses to them. That's absolutely a myth. Using a glasses, the patient's vision definitely improves. We as eye doctors, what we do it is, uh, you must have seen in the eye clinic, there must be a chart where alphabets are written. So the size of the alphabets and the distance from it, the patient reads and all, it's managed according to the international standards. So we make them read the last line, whatever, with glasses or whatever, without glasses. So the patient has to read the last line. So if, even if the patient is reading with the glass, that's okay, but the vision at least is there. Now, what will happen if you don't wear glasses? If you don't wear glasses, if you have a spectacle number and you are not using it, definitely the vision will be less. The patient will be reading a little higher alphabets, not the lowest one. If you don't use now, if you come at a later stage, maybe a child has got unnoticed. He had a number from child, maybe whatever, minus five, minus six, and he comes at a later stage. These patients we get. Later, if he comes at around 11 years or 12 years or maybe 15 years, that time the worry is even after using a lens or even after using a specs number, the vision doesn't come fully normal. Because that eye has turned into a lazy eye, even after using a number, the full vision, the full potential of the retina, the macula is not coming. That's because it has got unnoticed. Okay? That shouldn't be the cause. So we, what we basically have to do is at least get once in a year check up, see if any number is there or not. One more important thing is all school going children, just before going to school, just visit an eye doctor, just see if they have any number or not. Because it's very important for us and you 
to diagnose any condition as early as possible. The more early it is diagnosed, it's better to treat the final prognosis and all, it's much better. So these were mostly computer related or nearby related, the work related problems and younger age group. How are the older age group people affected because of lockdown? Yes, there are lot many diseases. The most common causes of blindness like diabetic retinopathy or hypertensive retinopathy, dark glaucoma, cataracts and all. These usually require frequent follow-ups to the doctor. But during lockdown, we all were homebound. No one got a chance to go to the doctor. Absolutely, you know all the reasons. But what had happened is there was no frequent monitoring of the symptoms or signs, how it had progressed and all. And now we are coming up with patients who are absolutely, who have not gone to the doctor, they have come at a later stage. So what happens is it becomes difficult to revive things back now. So whatever symptoms and all were there, they have much more progressed. They couldn't go to the doctor. So the most common people who have been affected were the older age groups who had diabetics or diabetic retinopathy. I, I think almost in everyone's house there will be someone who is having diabetes. India is the capital of diabetes. And uh, in diabetics, what happens is in all patients of diabetes, some patients will have diabetic retinopathy. So what is diabetic retinopathy is when we consider our eye, the most anterior part is the cornea, the most front part is the cornea, then comes the lens, and the most behind part is the retina. Retina is the one where the image falls, and it's highly vascular. There is more and more blood supply to it. In diabetics, if there is very poor control of blood, blood sugars, what I meant was, the vessel which is there, the blood vessel, the vessel wall gets damaged. Okay, once it starts getting damaged, what it will do is it will start leaking blood outside. So once the retina, there is a lot of bleeding, it will bleed into the vitreous cavity, vision will drop down. So what happened in the patient couldn't come to for a routine follow-ups and all, because uh, even the American Academy of Ophthalmology states, once in a year for all diabetic patients have to check their eyes see if there are any changes, any bleeding or any retinal changes. If there are any changes, it should be called much earlier. If there are much more severe changes, intervention is required, maybe a laser or any injections or any surgery, if at all, depends upon the severity. So it's very important as you, as a patient checks diabetic blood sugar levels, always check the retina also once in a year. If it's normal, yes, check it once in a year again. Other group of diseases where adults are mostly affected was glaucoma. Glaucoma is a condition where the eye pressure increases. Just as you have a blood pressure, your eye also has a pressure, right? So just imagine a, a bucket where water is being secreted, the tap is there on top and there is an outflow. Now eye is a similar condition where there is an aqueous inflow where there is water is secreted and water is out, comes out from the outlet. If there is more secretion or there is a blockage at the outflow, the pressure will rise. If the pressure rises, only one point it will give you a, a, the most damage and that's the optic nerve. The optic nerve is a connection between the eye to the brain. If the eye pressure is more, what it will do is it will go and press the nerve and it will start damaging it. Once it gets damaged, the bad luck of us is that it is irreversible. Once the optic nerve it gets damaged, there is no treatment for it. So in all glaucoma patients, it's always important to check the eye pressure regularly. How much it is, depending upon that, we titrate the eye drops to lower the blood, uh, the eye pressure, I mean. So in lockdown, what happened was all the glaucoma patients couldn't come to revive the eye pressures. So the eye pressures were more, the optic nerve has got more damaged and all. So the optic nerve damage, there are specific tests, computerized tests, which automatically gives how much percent of the nerve is gone, that depends on that. The other group of diseases were like cataracts. You must be knowing anyone, most of your parents or uh, your elder ones must have got surgeries for cataracts and all. Now this pandemic, what it has done is, cataract is a opacification of the normal crystalline lens. A normal lens for every one of us is like a clear glass. Once cataract starts developing in it, it will get opacified, it will start becoming thicker. As the time progresses, what the thickness of the lens increases, it becomes more harder. Now with latest techniques, what we used to do, we use and operate the cataract at a middle stage where it can be done with laser. So doing it with a laser, the advantage is what we can do it with a smaller cut. Now what is happening, we are experiencing patients who are coming now late where the cataract has developed to a full last stage. Last stage means it becomes like a thick stone. 
So you can't operate it with laser. The other things you have to, you have to operate it with is a simple hand technique where you have to give a bigger cut. You might have to take stitches and all. So the, all the advantages of the latest techniques are being lost since the patients are coming up at a much later stage. The cataract becomes much thicker. You have to remove it with a normal hand technique and the laser machine can't work. So these were the most common experiences like uh, the, par the patients who are coming up at a later stage. So to conclude, uh, how we can protect ourselves from uh, all these side effects or uh, as our computer screen time is all increasing, we have to protect like we have to try to decrease the screen time. Okay, whatever we are using for educational purpose, like for any classes and all, okay, that's okay that you can use it. But one thing you can do is say after every 20 minutes of your screen time, maybe on a computer or a laptop, after every 20 minutes, take a break, take a break, look through a window outside or at a distance object, more than six meters I mean, so that the eye relaxes a bit, okay. The eye muscles get relaxed, so there is more likelier chance that you have, you don't have glasses later. So what you can do is rub your hands in between, just massage a bit, try to relax the eye muscles. So there is a very highly likely chance that you won't get a number. Other routine things is like you have to visit an eye doctor if you are any, having any symptoms or any blurriness and all, just to rule out any specs number. If at all specs numbers are there, we have to use it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sarvesh Savan, for sharing your experience with us. I would now like to invite Dr. Vardhan Bohe to share with us his experiences of patients he's seen post-pandemic with the complications they've come and how the same have been treated. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. I would like to thank Mr. Jairaj for having me here for the Medical Expo and to be part of this elite panel and this uh, wonderful audience here. Rather than uh, presenting more of these complications and you know, uh, uh, whatever uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Lionel said, I would uh, like it to be more interactive, okay? So I'll keep my talk very short. Actually speaking, this pandemic, we were really unfortunately fortunate to be part of this. Unfortunate, obviously, because you know what we went through was extremely unfortunate. Maybe for us, our family, our friends, and for the rest of our countrymen and the rest of the world. Fortunate because we got a chance. We got a chance to perform, prove to the world that you know anything is achievable and nothing is impossible. We could do the unachievable and try to control as many deaths as possible and uh, bring the mortality as well as morbidity of the patients down. At a time when we had a very, very negative one's mindset, you know, we were uh, very scared treating the patients and all, you know, for our own health and our family members. At that time, to go see the patients perform when the family members themselves retract and they don't uh, even come near the patients and uh, be with them for eight hours, 12 hours, 24 hours, not a joke, and uh, bring down the mortality of the patients was something that uh, was really very great. There were a lot of problems uh, for each lockdown and each uh, wave that came, but I think the first wave and the second wave was all that we needed to uh, uh, get over. Because according to the history, if you have seen in the so many last uh, centuries of the world, Always it has been shown that the first wave is the one where nobody is prepared because the virus is not uh, something what anybody has seen, not any, nor anybody has known like what are the effects of the virus, right? And then you see the patient, you don't know what's the proper uh, protocol of the treatment, the protocol changes day by day, week by week, and uh, uh, I mean, you all have all witnessed one drug after the other, there are side effects of the high drugs that are given. So, then the, came the second view, where the second view again has been proven in the, in the past that second view hits like a, a, a view, it's like a tsunami. In spite of the first view not uh, uh, having so, many, so much of mortality, second view had a big mortality. That is because the virus learns to live in the world and becomes more communicable and more potential. But 
After that, once that is done, the uh, third part of it is relatively communicable but less serious and that's why everybody got through. So that is why I said we were unfortunately fortunate, okay? Now there were many patients who uh, came and you know, uh, as, a, as a doctor, you can have only two mindsets, either a negative mindset or a positive mindset. So positive mindset that I had, the doctor in me said, though I am a surgeon, I cannot just sit down at home in the lockdown. I had to go and perform my duties as a normal, uh, non-surgical doctor on duty. And many of us, like Dr. Sarvesh and so many others, everybody must have performed the same duties in spite of, of not being very well versed with the uh, regular treatment uh, that, that we do as, as a surgeon or some other specialty. We, were, uh, we came out of our own comfort zone, went and treated the patients. Now, in these depressing times, I feel, uh, you know, uh, we ridiculed so many things like this uh, tali, tali bajao and diya jalao. But what it did in these depressing times was that it brought the whole country together and gave us light moments, you know. We should not miss that. This, this is the positive way of looking at it and always we should have it in us. We should never have any negative uh, uh, mindset to say, oh, okay, this is bad, that is bad. You know, that, that takes the country back and that is definitely not, we should, not what we should have. We should see the good in everything. So at a time when the world was very depressed and the country was going through bad times and we had sleepless nights, you know, the, uh, the, the first time, I think that was the first day, the Tali Bajao, right? when the uh, country came together and saw light at everybody's home and, uh, and some, some good sounds, right? So every, the country united for the first time in the first lockdown. There was so much of problems, you know, so people came with so many complications, the diabetic patients, hypertensive patients, heart patients, who were regular follow-ups every day, every week, sometimes every month, sometimes every uh, fortnightly, they used to go to a doctor. Unfortunately, because of the lockdown, either there was no travel available, not everybody uh, is blessed with a luxury car. Some people travel by uh, state transport, which was not available during the first lockdown. And that created a lot of problem. So I think the first wave passed off with almost uh, surgical department being closed down and everybody more medically oriented to take care of the patients and challenges. Towards the second lockdown and the second wave which happened, the, the departments became more streamlined, government opened out private hospitals and that's when the load of the patients increased, private load increased by more of COVID patients, there was COVID and non-COVID being treated simultaneously. The challenge here was not to mix COVID with non-COVID because the disease was so communicable that a non-COVID patient would easily contract COVID uh, infection, uh, especially during the hospital stay. And there are instances, instances which, uh, I mean, I can share you, but because of lack of time, I can just tell you one, where uh, uh, myself being a laparoscopic surgeon and a cancer surgeon, I had uh, done a, a rectal carcinoma, rectal cancer, and this patient came with a COVID negative report. There was a protocol where we do a COVID test for each and every patient before surgery. And after four days of this, the patient unfortunately contracted COVID infection, probably because of cross infection uh, with uh, other patients or the relative must have got the infection, whatever. I mean, uh, you can't uh, blame any one particular person at that time. So. Then the patient started blaming the hospital and everything, you know, the a patient who has been operated for cancer then uh, worsens because of COVID. The patient will never see that, you know, they will always blame the doctor, okay, what you have done and what, is, uh, what my dad has landed in. Fortunately, everything went off well and uh, patient recovered. But such instances were seen all over the country where for no fault of doctors, medical staff, nurses, uh, all the class four staff, they worked with their hearts and, you know, uh, almost like 24 hours. Some people like uh, ambulance drivers and uh, those working in hearse vans 
were stayed away from your family for almost a month, two, three, four. There are instances in Maharashtra where six months a person couldn't go home because of uh, 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 being on duty and for fear that he will uh, transmit the infection to the family members, his friends, community. The pe pe person worked almost like close to 24 hours in the uh, hearse when uh, working his day out and day night, you know. These people are uh, are actually the COVID warriors. Obviously, everybody else also contributed in their own way, but I would salute these people who really gave their uh, completely uh, to this cause and uh, brought us out of this uh, COVID pandemic. Now, uh, as, as you must be all aware, uh, how many of us have been wearing masks here? Not many. 50% are, 50% are not. But imagine wearing this mask for almost like 12 hours on a duty, wearing those huge uh, PPE kits and uh, working even in the AC, you know. So some people had to wear two PPE kits being in the ICU and all that. It was absolutely not uh, easy. It was extremely difficult and uh, females couldn't get a pee break, you know. So uh, working for 12 hours at a stretch, sometimes ICU, people don't understand how difficult it is the, uh, the medical uh, personnel has worked beyond uh, their comfort zone and in such difficulty and in a time when there were Lancet and so many journals across the world who are absolutely biased against the, our country which brought out reports which said that India will have the highest number, I don't know whether you almost have read, crores of infection and at least 5 to 10 crores of death. And where do we stand today? Much better than the rest of the world. I don't know what's the future, but today we have proven a journal as huge as Lancet wrong. And that's why I call this bias towards our country, you know. So whatever it is, but we proved everybody wrong and we fought hard. So here again, the positive mindset. So doctor, if you had to think that, ah, this is going to be so difficult, you know, positive mindset, you take this as a challenge. Any time for the rest of, the, of your life you uh, come across a situation, you cannot just uh, fall back saying that no, it's going to be very difficult. You can, you can only have a positive mindset. I am sure Dr. Hanin will uh, tell us more about this. Uh, so all of us worked uh, very hard and with a positive mindset. Another thing, most of the patients had complications as in liver, uh, in, uh, sorry, lungs, where uh, there was a lot of uh, pneumonias and uh, ARDS, respiratory dist uh, distress syndrome. And because of this, the lungs got compromised. So these patients who had to be operated, had to wait till the time this infection had to be cleared. In regular patient where we don't require much investigations and especially not a CT scan of the chest, Unfortunately, we had to advise a CT scan just prior to any surgery. It may be a small surgery like a circumcision, but a CT scan had to be advised for, uh, uh, you know, fitness from the anesthesia point of view and based on the severity of, so many people got lung fibrosis, right? So in order to gauge the severity of the infection, uh, we had to do CT scans for almost all the patients. So exposure to scans was so high. In addition to the hospital patients, the medical personnel, all um, Ayur Ayurvedic, homeopathic, allopathic, uh, non-medical nurses, everybody, psychologists, everybody worked together to monitor close to uh, almost uh, 12 lakh, 15 lakh population of Goa. And everybody was screened on uh, one call and uh, if there was any severe infection, the patients reported immediately to the hospital and they were taken care of. The problem was only in the second wave when there was huge uh, number of uh, case load and not everybody could get a bed in their, uh, uh, in their hospital. So by far, now I feel the situation is 99% uh, better and I am sure with the positive mindset that I have that uh, we are almost through of this pandemic. Doesn't mean that tomorrow we can dance in public without following any restrictions. We should uh, always follow restrictions because this is just gone. COVID is just gone. Doesn't mean that there will be no other disease in future. And as a medical personnel, I assure you and guarantee you, we'll be always there to take up the challenge and uh, live uh, to see another day and make everybody see uh, another day. And 
thanks for uh, coming in large numbers and you know let us have a good interactive session so if you have got any uh, doubts in your mind we'll be uh, more than ready to answer them thanks Thank you, Dr. Vardhan Bohe, for sharing your experiences with us. As we announced earlier, and let you all know, that this program is being streamed live. Yesterday, in about half an hour's time, we had about close to 30,000 views. It's currently being streamed live, and we're also happy to have with us Mr. Sandeep Kerkar, the Managing Director, Editor, in chief of Prime TV, he is here present himself. Can we give him a round of applause, please? We are grateful to him for all the efforts in streaming and having this program live on Prime TV. I would now like to call forward Dr. D.V. Deshpande to share his experiences with us. First thing is sorry for being late. I made you all waiting. There was some misunderstanding, some confusion in mind. Might be, might be COVID effect, might be mobile effect, might be WhatsApp effect, but then I'm sorry for that. And uh, Corona, COVID, yes, over, I think, yes. Biupache garaj na, biupache garaj na. If you are vaccinated, one vaccine, second vaccine, and booster vaccine, and might be unknowingly somebody in the family had and the whole family has gone through. If your resistance is good, immunity is good, you might not have noticed it, you caught it. Now, after the third round of COVID, I started getting patients with hair loss. Three people, three ladies from the family. And uh, when you ask whether you had COVID, she says no, she says no, might be she had. Might be she had, and you are in the family because she had, might be you all also had. And you didn't realize it. Might be a little bit body ache or might be learning nose here and there. And Oh, Makaka is Aina, you are taken crocine and that has done the job. Standithi, Sachabashen, Thikaining, that is also there. This 15 lakh population, actually, if you really, a zero positivity study is being done, might be 50, 60 percent people have gone through. The remaining 40, again, an old man, elderly man, lying down in a bed in the corner. Old houses, big houses. Dantancha kudin, anin kon vachana shille, na dantancha kutti, balti kutti, burganchi kutti, that kind of separation also was there. So, getting infected, not, not. Sometimes when I ask whether you had COVID, mask, no, they say. Uh, then whether you got vaccinated, okay. Then going for a walk in the evening with the mask on is possibly again you are straining your lungs and the heart. And the mask is there and the smoke on the screen, I mean uh, on your lenses, Dr. Savant. And then how to walk, how to take the next step. That also is difficult. So little bit mask down is also possibly okay. Then suppose you are in a train, Mumbai train, it's so good to have your mask. That will protect from other viral diseases also. That will protect from allergic asthma or that, that also. So mask as no, yes. The hair thing, what I said, telogen aflevum, sudden loss of hair, after about three months, of a attack on the body, like this, with a disease, like corona, might be even a viral fever, or like typhoid, or hepatitis, and then after three months, you lose a lot of hair. Biotin and uh, supplementation, iron if required, and assurance. Yes, hair do grow back. And other thing, wash your hands. How many times? Before coming in, in the clinic, wash your hands. Going out, wash your hands. Going to the pharmacy, wash your hands. People tend to wash your hands, nothing else but wash your hands. 
Wash your hands 20, 30 times a day with what? Sanitizer, soaps, detergents, this, that, that, and ultimately the hands are spoiled. There is something called as cumulative insult dermatitis. Again and again, if the skin is insulted, land with dermatitis. Or else you can land with fungal infections on the hand. The nails, the nails get infected, can be bacterial as well as fungal. This fungal infection, again, you know, the body, your body, touch here, touch there, A to Z, any part of the body, you can have fungal infection. Again, take this as a side effect of this. I don't know whether I should talk or not, but then talk. If somebody is killing 99.9% .9 of the bacteria, good or bad, from head to toe, and sir, you have killed them all, what were these bacteria? Some were good. Little bit body odor, little bit one or two boils, pimples and all, was accepted. And they were surviving on the secretions from the body. Some secretions were always there from the skin, little bit sweat, little bit sugar, little bit oil. And on those, these bacteria were surviving. Multiply, little bit body odor, okay, take bath, you are fine, clean, nothing is all right. But then if you kill 99.9%, .9%, the secretions continue, something has to grow on the secretions, and you have a body full of fungus. Believe me, my young dear friends, when a patient comes to you, 100 kg patient, all the time, So, then specifically, 99.9% लगाते हो, साब, महिने को 2 लीटर डेटॉल चाहिए नहाने के लिए, महिने को 2 लीटर डेटॉल नहाने के लिए, why, why only डेटॉल, he is working in Sulab Sauchal, this is what he gets for his, Sulab Sauchal, what will be the salary? Correct? How much he can afford? How much medicines he can take? How many doctors he can visit? All right, okay. And then stop that and take this, some XYZ medicine. Up to 15 days when he comes back, believe me, nothing was there on the skin. I want an applause from you all. You can understand this. Nothing on the skin after 15 days. And witness, no witness. But fortunately, there was a medical rep sitting on the first day also. And same fellow was there again in my clinic. I said, Isko dekho jara. That's it. And that's an actually award-winning paper. But who will give the award? Right? It all will not give. The pharma company who is not here will not give because medicine will not be sold. But then for you all to understand what not to do. It all had a tie-up with five-star hotels for the swimming pool also. You swim in the swimming pool, leisurely this, all bacteria killed. One week of Nice holiday in a swimming pool, you had it. So this, keep in mind, extensive use of antibiotics locally, wrong diagnosis, wrong treatment, big problems, okay? Then combinations, antibiotic and antifungal combinations, avoid. Steroid antifungal combinations, avoid. Be specific, treat specifically, things will be okay. Diabetic control, fungal infection, that is again hand in gloves. The fungus can be there from head to toe, any part, each part, each part is named. And usually in the whole family, sometimes one month's salary is not sufficient to treat all the patients in the family. Think, be positive. Earlier when I was a student, like you all, we did see these ringworm cases. Ringworm, not palm worm or hand worm or big one, bangle worm, small, small, something in the groin here and there. Treat with uh, benzoic acid, salicylic acid combination, gisofulvin, the patients were all right. Now these huge things also not becoming all right. Reason is we are mistreating, misdiagnosing, and that is it. So then what? What else? One, two. Do you want anything else? Question answers? Okay. All right. All else, I hand my mic to the 
next person. Thank you. A big thank you to Dr. Desh Pandey. We have amongst us a well-known doctor from Goa, Dr. Mahindra Kuchudkar. He could join us a little late because of prior appointments on a surgery that, he could, that couldn't be missed. I would like you all to put your hands together as we extend a warm welcome to Dr. Mahindra Kuchudkar. He's an orthopedic surgeon. Doctor is the director of the Healthway Hospital. Been into practice for over 27 years. Once again, a thunderous round of applause as we welcome Doctor on the stage. I would like to request Mr. Robert Navraj to present Doctor a floral bouquet as we welcome him. I would now like to call forward Dr. Abhijit Shanbagh to share with us his experiences. Hello, good afternoon everyone. And thank you Mr. Natarajan for the today's opportunity. So my talk will be very short and it is an experience based uh, over the last two years what we have seen. So as Dr. Vardhan said that this was a time, the toughest time, the last two years, where the entire medical fraternity came together and worked as a team. And today we stand over here with very less mobility and mortality compared to the Western states. So, as a pediatrician, we have seen uh, many uh, effects of the COVID-19 pandemic in the children. And currently we are seeing the post-lockdown effects. So in the first wave, in the second wave, the pediatric population was very much affected with COVID-19, but the symptoms were less severe than the adult population. There were mild symptoms like fever, cough, running nose, which were managed mostly at home. But after the waves were over, for example, after the first wave and after the second wave, two months later, we had something strange happening with the kids. Most of the kids were presenting with very high fever, with symptoms involving the kidneys, the heart, the liver. So it was like a multi-system presentation, which was never seen before. And we termed it as multi-system inflammatory symptoms in COVID-19, MISI. So that was very, uh, we had uh, three, four mortalities in Goa. We lost three, four kids to COVID-19, post-COVID-19 sequelae. And luckily in the third wave, post the third wave, we have not seen so many fatalities. Now, what we need to understand is that children, they do, did not have acute effects of COVID-19, but now we are seeing the post-lockdown sequelae in the kids. So mostly it is physical as, and mental. So physically, we are seeing most of the kids, they, are, they have become overweight, they have become obese due to no physical activity, very poor eating habits, eating of junk foods, always being exposed to TV, mobile, increase in the screen time exposure. Also, we have seen a large number of school dropouts in the last two years. There has been an increase in number of abuse in children, be it mentally or physically, in the last two years. A new thing which we have seen in the last few months is an increase in number of kids with developmental delays. There have been many patients who come one and a half year old, two year old child, but they are not able to speak. Even in your family, you must have seen your nephews, nieces, your friends, kids, who are having developmental delays. They are not behaving like a normal two-year-old child would behave. They are having very poor social interaction. They are not mixing with other kids. They are always engrossed in their own self, always with their mobile or with their TV, not mixing with others, no, not speaking. So a new spectrum, which, was, which is termed as autism, has been seeing, we have been seeing more number of cases of autism in currently. Also the kids between three years to seven years who have never been to school, there have been hesitancy amongst them to join school. There has been increase in number of hyperactivity, inattention in such kids. 
Also, there has been increase in number of social anxiety uh, among kids. They are, having, they are having stranger anxiety. They don't want to mix with others. They are always scared of meeting new people. So these are the post-COVID sequelae which we have been seeing in pediatrics. So a take-home message from my talk would be, if you find any child or any, any of your friends or uh, kids who are having poor speech output, having speech delay, having difficulty in interaction with other kids, then these are all the red flags and you need to direct them to a pediatrician or to a child psychologist at the earliest. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Abhijit Chanbak, for enlightening us with your thoughts, your experience, and your knowledge. I would now like to call forward Dr. Mahindra Kuchudkar to share with us his experiences. Slide changer from here. Can I? I'm supposed to have a slide changer. All my presentation is here. This is your slides? Yeah. Good afternoon. I think uh, you guys have been listening to lectures since morning and probably I am the last one. So I will be the one between your lunch. Uh, it's nice to see all youngsters in the crowd. Uh, just as my presentation gets ready, I would like to ask uh, you all a question. How many of you all think that COVID was not such a bad thing. Can you raise your hands? How many of you think that COVID was not such a bad thing? So how many of you think it is bad? So COVID was bad. <clears throat> so I think to me personally, I mean, I definitely, I think it's the age difference. You guys being young, not able to get out of your house, COVID was almost like a prison sentence. It ha just kept you home and... Uh, so, am I ready? Yeah. All right, okay, thank you. In case, if in case because of range, it doesn't work, we will change it then. Oh, all right, thank you. Is, is this back in front? So, I think... Each one of us, based on what age group we were, COVID has made uh, a positive or a negative impact. Definitely at your age, you wanted to be with your friends, enjoying parties, getting out, watching movies. That didn't happen. But definitely, I think it gave you a different perspective about what do you do when life gets tough. This was almost like, for me, a, a World War situation is exactly what happens to you when World War starts. You're homebound. You never know you, when you're going to die. And uh, so it's, it's exactly that stress minus the actual war. So COVID has shown us only one thing, that size does not matter. A small virus like that has actually killed more than 4 million people. So. It also made us aware that if we are not with the, the environment, the environment is not going to take care of you. So let me start my presentation. Uh, the incidence of post-COVID symptoms that I'm going to talk about. Uh, COVID is over, definitely. There is no two things about it. Whether the third wave will come, fourth wave will come, that's just a matter of time. But one thing is for sure, it's not going to kill as many people that it did in the second one. But what it has left us is with a lot of morbidity in terms of pain, suffering. And as an orthopedic surgeon, I tend to see a lot of patients coming back with a lot of back pains. So let me first go through it quickly. Uh, incidence of post-COVID symptoms are more common in females. Increased age and higher body mass index, that is being obese, is a big risk. If you have associated diabetes, blood pressure, or any other chronic illness, you have more chances of having post-COVID symptoms. And if you, it's also about your ability to uh, remain active. Those who are having sedentary lifestyle probably at a higher chance of suffering. So how does the virus work? See, basically the virus has got two ways to it. It's a direct mechanism where it directly binds to the ACE2 receptors on the skeletal muscle cells. Now, this is very, very important to know that 
post covid when covid attacked he initially attacked the pulmonary the lungs that was the primary area that it attacked but when it was over it went and stayed back on the skeletal muscle cells so most of the post covid symptoms are related to musculoskeletal pain simple thing like being tired fatigue fatigue is the most common symptom post covid so any of you all feel that you know my energy levels are not the same that i used to be before and if you have had covid or even if you did not have covid it doesn't matter it because it just because you have a negative test doesn't mean you didn't have one it can be attributed to covid itself the second one was by what it does that covid initiated a very strong uh, uh, inflammatory reaction and what people are suffering now is chronic inflammation from that virus the virus is there it's dead but what it has left is that it has created a chronic inflammatory state so you are having a vague uh, headache body ache fatigue something like you know you, you wake up in the, in the morning and you are never fresh your sleep pattern has probably changed you are not able to get that deep sleep all these are part of post covid <coughs> so this is a small uh, a slide which shows you how the virus attaches but what it does it basically goes and affects all your multi organs covid is one virus it is it is like it has changed the way we as doctors have actually started looking at medicine new books have to be rewritten because covid has acted like a completely new virus it has it has a completely different mechanisms of uh, action and it has left a big mark on after effects so now this slide i have put is just to make you a little uh, funny side because when the vaccine came you know people were worried about taking a vaccine and the media works either for you or against you either it makes you knowledgeable or it just makes you more scared so every time a new medicine was there people either tried it or were scared to try it but let me tell you one thing those who have not taken the vaccine are at a disadvantage there is no two things about it very very few people have died or have had side effects of the vaccine but looking at the larger picture you have to get vaccinated because that vaccine is going to make your body you know ready for the actual infection so if you have not got infected great but you have not taken the vaccine please go ahead and do it so uh, finally the corona virus either will kill you or it will maim you so those who left us are probably the luckier ones but what i'm trying to say is that covid just because you survived it doesn't mean that it is not going to hit you it's going to make your life difficult provided now i am not trying to tell you that all of us are going to get sick but what you need to do so that you remain stronger that the next wave that comes in doesn't hit you the most important thing for any illness is that you have to be a happy person if you are scared you are dead jo dar gaya wo mar gaya i'm telling you people have died actually by fear so when i say they died out of fear it just doesn't mean they actually saw a ghost and then they died no moment you get scared your immune system down regulates your ability to fight the disease becomes poor same thing with cancer if you say i have cancer and you are very happy you so many studies have proved that you can live a longer life and sometimes the cancer also is killed but what i am trying to tell you is that it's your mental approach don't go by anything don't have to get panic follow the rules be happy social interaction being with each other talking to each other having fun is extremely important these are some of the symptoms that as i said you can see that fatigue is the number one symptom then basically uh, you know being like a brain fogginess you're not able to concentrate not able to focus can be a symptom and one of the best solution for that is to practice deep breathing pranayam let me tell you if you don't want to see a doctor's face please practice deep breathing exercises half of your problems will be over second see that at least one hour you spend doing a good physical activity and third most important thing is do not buy anything to eat that comes in a packet you understood what i'm saying anything that comes in a pack 
is a food which has been manipulated. It means noodles, it means churmure, it means coke, it means anything, any food that can be stored for six months, three months, is a food which has been manipulated so that it has lost its nutritional value. It just gives you calories. The only food that you can eat is the food that will get destroyed if you don't eat it today. So you have to eat anything that is fresh. Try not to eat leftovers or that which comes on the shelf. And the biggest reason for today for being people being fat is eating processed foods. And that makes your immunity low. So all of you guys, you're in the age group where you know you have problem with pimples, with some skin rashes, putting on weight, your hormonal cycles have gone. Some people of you, the ladies could be suffering from what is called as PCOD. All that is linked to the food that you eat. So please watch what you eat. That is number one. Get adequate sleep. Drink plenty of water. Don't drink anything else. Your body just needs water. It's as simple as that. The slides are not moving. Okay. So what you have to look for is muscle weakness, fatigue, uh, BMD is the bone strength, so quality of your strength in the bone has also reduced. So the only way to counteract that is by increasing your physical activity. Whether you want to go to the gym, whether you want to do yoga, whether you want to do pilates, whether you want to swim, cycling, anything, just one hour, just get out and take some sun on your face. Don't run away from the sun. The sunshine, vitamin D is going to protect you from many diseases, not just orthopedic problems. Because vitamin D is a big enzyme. It is required for so many other functions in the body. Next slide. Next. Are you going back? Uh, okay. Next. So if you have had symptoms 4 to 12 weeks post-COVID, that is called as a post-COVID. And you can also get a syndrome. Your symptoms can last up to one year. So these are two situations where COVID can still bother you post-COVID. Next slide. Next one. Next. I'm skipping slides because I've already spoken about it. So if you see coronavirus, if you see there on the top, the most important frequently reported symptom is joint pains and muscle pains post-COVID. So any of you have post-COVID symptoms like body ache or th there's no specific treatment, you just have to get out, start exercising, eat the right type of food, improve your immunity, and that's it. The body will take care of it by itself. Next slide. Next. So there is a very high risk of chronic pain post COVID. So you should be able to deal with this by going to your doctor and dealing with it. There are many ways to deal with it. So those who are suffering from a chronic pain, whoever in the family should approach because there is a particular way of treating this chronic pain post COVID. Next slide. Next. Next. So these are some of the blood tests that we do to find out whether your body has inflammation or not. And it is possible to um, assess what degree of inflammation it is. Next slide. Now if you see this slide, uh, post-COVID, 71% have a weight issue. 46% have a mental issue. These are all problems post-COVID. So there were a uh, lot of work days lost and the hospital costs have gone high. Next slide. Now this is a nice slide. What are the evening plans before COVID and after COVID? How many of you will accept this? How many of you spend time on your mobile? Previously that this habit has now lingered on and that you have not got back. So what I would like to say that I understand when you were homebound that you were spending a lot of time on your mobile. Now you are, you are free birds. So please go back to your old habits of going for a walk, going out, taking a nice walk in the sunshine, and controlling the amount of screen time that you're having there. Thank you very much. Thank you, doctor, for that lovely slide. And also telling us a lot about our daily habits and the way we're supposed to live and what we're supposed to eat which many of us don't realize otherwise. We're quite used to having a lot of packed foods, foods with a lot of preservatives, but I'm sure doctors um, 
presentation has kind of taught us a lot. At least I'm going to change and work towards a better diet as compared. I would now like to invite and call forward Hanin Kadar to share with us her experiences. Good afternoon, the youth of Goa. Would you all mind if I walked around because I walk around a lot. So is that okay? Doctors, would you all mind if I walk past? All right. So. Check. Okay, I got this. Thank you, guys. Um, first of all, doctors, uh, everybody who's spoken here, I would really like to thank them for all that you've said. Because in all honesty, I would not be able to sum up or explain the concept, the field, or anything of mental health, because it is a subject that has not been talked about. We're not educated, and we're all scared of it. Right? Right. I won't get you all to talk, but quick responses. It's not going to be a panel, but I just want to assess the level of stress you felt are, or the people who are feeling stressed right now after listening to all the doctors that have said about both the positives and negatives. So how many people here feel at least a little stressed or experience stress? Hands up, please. Can I have that? OK, nobody's stressed. OK, one, I see one, two, three, four. OK, we have four people who experience stress despite all, not despite listening to what the doctors had to say because they were both positives and negatives. Am I right? All right. Now, what I want to tell you is that if you notice, a lot of symptoms and a lot of things that the doctors mentioned here are somehow related either to your physical health, but it also correlates with your mental health. Right? We are now beginning to understand that mental health is important and it has an impact because we all got to face it and experience it firsthand. Right? Right. I don't want to say right. You all can just nod maybe? Yeah? Okay. All right. So I don't want to be talking about, uh, let's say, educating you about what is depression, anxiety, and schizophrenia, and mania. All of those things exist. We have the next member, Mr. Swaroop. Swaroop, sir, I think we have a couple of people who've come here for Swaroop, sir. So he's going to educate you all on that. But I would like to address a more pressing issue, which is in the field of mental health. And I would like to uh, re-emphasize and let you all know that I am a psychologist, a very passionate one. And uh, I used to call myself a mental health advocate when I was a student. But now I call myself a mental health activist. So there is a difference there, right? Right. The reason I choose to do this is that all of us have to realize, or maybe let's, maybe let's just go back in time, when we did not have the technology, when we did not have the buildings, the lights, all of these fancy things that we have, which is uh, a luxury to have, but also has you know, side effects, like the sedentary lifestyles we're talking about, right? Back then, there were famine, there were floods, earthquakes, things like that, with little resources. But people still flourished and fought great battles like wars, survival was high, not enough income, no education. But do you think that when you go back in history, like the time Buddha was there, or the time, say, Mother Teresa was there, Florence Nightingale, Gandhiji, Dr. Ambedkar, all of these people fought very big things, right? We, have, we were not fighting amongst us, but we were fighting another country. And do you think we did great as a country when we think about independence? Do you think so? We fought for our independence? Right. What I am beginning to see is that there was a sense of community. There were people gathering, talking, sharing, because now it was one country against the others, right? Back then we had a war for freedom. Now we're going through a psychological warfare. And that is because of two things. Fear, 
which has just shot up the roof ever since the pandemic. Can I have some water, please? Which has shot up since the pandemic, giving different people different problems. Physical health, of course. Nobody wants to die. Nobody wants their family members to die. Everybody wants all their loved ones to be happy. But it was a situation we couldn't control. And all we had to do was just wait for things to get better or for a miracle to happen. Now, we were in survival mode. A lot of things that I'm going to address that changed our lifestyle. Like a lot changed. I don't want to men mention things like this change, that change. But imagine you were literally like in a camp and that camp was in your house. And not everybody has the best relationship with their parents. And when anybody, even if you have the best relationship with the best people in your life, you put them in a room, it's going to turn into some kind of warfare, right? So what happened here is, one, there was a very big threat, a crisis, a virus that we don't know to control and there are people dying. Second, we have the media, like you rightly pointed out. It shifts from what it needs. I'm not saying everybody. See, there's different. Journalism is a very beautiful thing. Media is a very beautiful thing. In all areas, you will have the good and the not so good. So let's not look at doctors, pharmaceutical companies, journalism. Let's not look at all of that. What, we ha what happened here is we all parted. We lost the support system of our family members because either we were sick or they were sick. We were burnt out because we had to constantly take care. High levels of stress. I'm not well, but I'm exams coming. Uh, I have, some have to write exams. Some do not have to write exams. I mean, I would also get angry if I was not given the easy option, right? So there was a lot of things going on, but you couldn't talk to your parents. Your parents couldn't talk to you. Mother had to cook. Father had to provide. Students had to uh, study well enough so that they can provide. So much going on. And then there is health issues. Like, for example, you can't walk properly. You can't sleep properly. You can't see properly. You can't, you're losing hair. You're, uh, you know, you have some kind of uh, cyst inside. So there's so many physical illnesses that are coming that require you to go to a doctor which you otherwise would if you were feeling extremely mentally okay. It's just a leg pain. I know I have to go to the doctor. Doctor, can you please take care of it? We would do that. But when you're stressed and when you are experiencing symptoms of stress or mental illness, which is largely low mood, no energy, don't feel like talking, don't want to talk, angry, or just crying, you will have no... You, you will need someone to either come to you and ask, hey, what's up, and be that person, or you will at least need the physical energy to go there. But mental health is such that it takes that away from you. It takes your energy, and it takes your ability to connect. You start isolating yourselves. Am I right? And you just are not in a space to talk. You're just so drained out, which stops you from going and seeking the help you actually need from these doctors. That adds up, that adds up, that adds up. Financial stress, others, it's all there, okay? Now, we're struggling physically and struggling mentally. Who think that body and mind is connected here? One person? Two, three, four, five, six? Yeah, most of them, body and mind is connected? Okay. We all know this now. It's not that we are stupid. It's not that we are dumb or we don't understand. Excuse my language, but I'm saying we are not any of that we are told to be. Humans as a species are adaptive, courageous, think. Most of all, we live in communities. We need people. We need people and those people need us. If you have a friend who you need, you have to understand that it's a two-way relationship. You give and you take. So when my friend's ill, I'm going to go and soothe him or be there for him. And likewise, when I'm not well, he or she's going to be there for me and soothe for me. But if we are to lose that soothing person who usually is my mom or my father, my sibling, my friends, we can't meet, we can't talk, what's happening? We're losing all our support systems. Am I right? 
That in itself causes depression, anxiety, a lot of things. That's another whole textbook altogether, which requires for us to work on. Like, sir, you said, we have to, the, the, the new um, researchers that have come out need to be told, right? Now, one thing that we don't understand is fear, that is what we most experienced in this pandemic, was fear of dying, fear of financial collapse, fear of losing a security, fear of being alone in the grave or alone in the world. Because now we have lost the ability to talk to each other or even communicate. Socializing is hard. Yes, up till 10th, 12th, it's very easy. And even up to graduation, it's easy to make friends because you have a place where there are options. But once you adult, my friend, once you adult and take a job, you're going to have a very tough time making friends because you're going to be busy working and making money or securing your life. And you are, you're going to think that friends are not so important. But that is also a very big support system. What I'm trying to tell you is there was fear, isolation, and then there was media that showed the number of deaths. Like, sir, you were saying, can you please tell what you just said, the number of uh, expected uh, death rates that was expected and what it is now? Yeah, so it was expected that uh, India would perform very badly and uh, we would have deaths in the range of almost one to three crores. But uh, finally it turned out that with extremely good uh, management, it uh, came down to as low as maybe four to five lakh deaths. That's it. So if you look at it, India has done exceptionally well based on the statistics of others, whichever country, whoever did the research. So we did well. It's always a hypothesis, but we did well. How many of you all were aware of the fact that India did well and there was so much of gap? Uh, I mean, we did comparatively well because it's a lot of difference. How many of you all knew about this information? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, a couple of them. Right? Good. Good. We have to do that. I'll tell you why. Now, sir, can you please tell me about that article you said had to be published, the 99% about bacteria. You can use the, you can let go of that, but the idea, basically the finding, could you please say that? Oh. The 99.9% .9 killing medicine, killing bacterial thing. I have a liquid and with that I can kill 99.9% .9 bacteria on my skin, head to toe. Either apply, dilute or even pour it in a swimming pool and you are there in the swimming pool a long time. I have to end by. And when you say 99.9, .9, you actually keep your promise. You are not anywhere less than 99.9. .9. And the, all the bacteria on your skin, good or bad, are killed. Now the good bacteria are killed. What is this good bacteria, bad bacteria? Oh, okay. Staphylococci, streptococci, acne causing bacteria, the odor causing bacteria. Call them good, call them bad. But they are there, they have been there for generations. Today morning a patient came to me, yeah, body odor. Go on, but in Bangalore. I said, all right, don't worry. How much, how often you take bath? He said, once in a day. Make it twice a day, order will come down. Don't try any specific things to cut down that order. Because there are good bacteria, they are taking care of the secretions, they are taking care of your sweat, the fat which is coming out onto the skin. If you kill the bacteria, for sure you are going to land with fungus. And that fungus is the ringworm. Ringworm is no more small like a ring. It's a palm size, big size and huge size. And treating it is a big thing. It's not a small thing, one prescription, buy this medicine, no. And then again, there are thousands of medicines available. Out of that, might be hundreds are okay and rest 900 are not okay. And you, are, you do not have a choice. You go to the pharmacy, mabare maka borete di. The pharmacy will give you borete, borete. It might not be borete for the patient, it might be borete for his accounting system. That is it, you know. And there is nothing beyond that, what I can say, but then the whole thing has to be demolished and built up from below. Medical concept, medical treatment is this. And a new medical has come, new medicine has come, this is new, but then this is costliest. No, no, no. From where do you afford to pay? Doctor, yeah. from this, can we, can we, can we say that 
we don't have a lot of information about bacteria at, at, that is we don't know what is good bacteria from what is bad bacteria and bad bacteria and we end up just listening and killing it now the point is my friends i want to un i want to make you all understand that right now we are forgetting what we are as humans we are a community of species that survive when we live together we are trusting of each other love is our strength fear is a very powerful emotion that can dismantle us and apart from that this unity is what breaks us we are the people who discovered aryabhatta discovered the zero we have so forget the countries we are humans as a species are such that we know we can all that we know now is done by a species that was done exactly from ours but the pandemic brought up fear no trust uh, isolation which is basically symptoms of mental illness and emotions but the media also did this it showed you the worst part of pandemic which got all of us naturally depressed and scared one second thing the media also spoke about a government pros and cons and confused us where we were like can we at least turn to the government because we are looking at them for support but now we couldn't look at them for support i'm not mentioning anybody generally because you you can look and look at the history and whoever has come forever it's always been democracy has not been the way democracy gandhi ji wanted us to have right third thing is these doctors who spent years studying about let's say the eyes the bones the hair I mean how much can you study about a hair unless you are really passionate about it and you want to do something about it right so these people are passionate about each and every organ they are learning because they want to do something about it they know it but we again are told that doctors we have certain agendas you hear about doctor getting beaten up and you hear about not to trust doctors they're not very they're making money making machines even we get that so what we try to do is we also cut that support system off and say we're not going to go to doctors no vaccine no doctors no community support not talking to anybody how can we not be depressed anxious scared and all of that at once we can figure all of this out we can figure all the health issues if you focus on your mental health what is mental health feeling peaceful being able to enjoy the things that you're doing liking what you're doing having the you stress not the distress the good motivation and it's not that you all have never felt that you all have experienced those good positive emotions those motivations at one point or the other in your life right which is why you all are here still studying making it through right so it's in you we have forgotten it or we need to remind ourselves of that come together make space for community and talking about mental health because that is our strength this is a psychological warfare we don't need to know what's happening in russia we don't need to know what's happening in the, like the happiest uh, i mean i i came across a lot of times the happiest country in the world is finland maybe good let's see why is it why is it a good country we can look at medics medicals we can always tell it's the money it's the government but you know what it doesn't matter what works well in finland and why they are happy what works for us and what will work for us here is what worked in india what kept us together how did we fight off the british unity how did we come up, come how did we come together and take care of each other love mother teresa she didn't need anything she it was all compassion being there for, for each other making space for each other all of this can be sorted if you all become open to the idea of what mental health is why it's being affected why you should reach out to it and how it starts from here it's head to toe you start from here you'll have clarity you'll be able to think straight you will be able to figure out like doctor said there's nothing that is not achievable trust yourself give some compassion kindness sometimes we might not know how to go and talk so maybe sometimes it happens that i want to talk to this person but i just so can't go talk to this person what you can do is 
I mean, if you go to your therapist, she might be able to tell you that I think you have social anxiety. How happy you would be if you were able to actually go and do the things you wanted to do. What's stopping you is your mental health, the thoughts that's going on in your head. And when those thoughts are just dead, imagine you're sitting at home, isolated, just lying on your bed for one day a week, eating junk food, packaged food, like Sir, sir said. What's going to happen? Naturally, your, bo your joint is going to hurt, your back is going to hurt, the pain is going to make you not want to get outside, not want to get outside makes you feel like you've missed out. You've, it's just a vicious circle. Are you able to see the connection? Yeah? Do you all have me? Because I'm going to tell you this is because, why I'm telling you this is because I'm not going to be available for the panel here. I'm going to be available for the second half because I have something, we, the organization, Yorikikai, we have something for you outside the hall post your sessions because the sense of community and the importance of community and how one of the ways to fight mental health and physical health is coming together as a community, as people, as humans, has a lot of importance. Like things like what doctor said, the sun. Don't run from the sun. You know what I do when I feel very sad and upset or depressed? Being a psychologist, because I know what to do, I make a cup of coffee, I just sit flat on the floor or wherever I can find sun, doesn't matter if it's on the floor, I just fall and I just let that sun come to me at 9 o'clock, that's pleasant. Sometimes I wake up, if I have a back pain, I just stretch and I meditate. These things you will find hard to do by yourself, but YouTube will always help you. But what if you had this one-on-one -on -one person who could tell you that this is what I feel and do this, because we are all different. English medicine, Yunani, homeopathy, I will not tell this is better than that. We are all different. It works differently for different people. So be open. Do not be scared. We are people who respond to love. So use that. Do not let somebody else tell you what's happening. We did better. Find out research. And you do not have to, be, you do not have to get scared when the media is saying we are doomed. Instead, think, okay, we are about to get doomed. What can we do? What can I individually do? Be there for your friend, if not anything else. The other part of mental health is going to be talked by Swaroop. We would like to see you outside later when you're done with all of this. If you have questions, I will come back in the next section. I speak as a mental health activist who is also a psychologist. Not as somebody who came to today educate you about the neurotransmitters and the dopamine and serotonin and how it all interacts. You've got this, we've got this. If we work towards it together, we've got this. We've achieved so many things. Now, as humans, use humanity, use human consciousness, and let's say um, the in, 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 innate ability to care for others and make space for each other's emotions. As Indians, we're very close knit, right? Sabko jana ki kya kare? Aapki beti kya padri? Aap achhe ho? Now it's become on a toxic level. But imagine every auntie and uncle went and asked, hey, how, are you, how are you doing? How's your family life? Is there anything I can do for you? We, uh, we would be an amazing community for ourselves. So let's start with that, because when there's a community, we have at least, when community involves doctors, teachers, everybody, and we will be able to find solution, and we will be able to trust the people in our community. You don't have to trust a doctor from France. We might have a doctor in the community, we can trust him. We can say, doctor, I'm scared. This is what I said. It has these repercussions. But I want to know if you think it's right. And if you trust the person enough by being around him, you take the chance because it's either meds and side effect or either meds and it works. If not that, you're just struggling. Med without meds, you're still struggling. So there's nothing that you're getting out of it by avoiding it. So that's about it, guys. I hope I didn't take much of your time. All of this is connected. We are all connected. And right now, we are not going through individual mental health. We are not going through individual mental illnesses. We, as a society, are going through a global, at least we are going through a global pandemic. Now, it's a, in India, it's a psychological welfare and a war against mental health. We have to understand what it is, and that's about it. Thank you. Thank you, Haneen, for beautifully summing it up on behalf of Swarup as well. Students, remember, we're going to have both of them with us all throughout the day. 
There's also going to be an, a session where if you all would like a one-to-one, -one, they're going to be here with us till evening. We would now like to move on to the question answer round. If any of the students have questions for our doctors on the panel, okay, if you all can, uh, we're going to circulate a mic around, a cordless mic. If you all have a question, our doctors will be more than happy to answer. Any questions from the students? Any doubts? Probably something that you guys have faced during the pandemic or you'll know of somebody who's faced something. Also, in a while, we're going to invite Mr. Dilawar Malade, the founder and director of ADMS Marketing. They've got two amazing products they would like to explain to all of us, products that are health-related, since this is a health expo. They're here, they're beautiful products that will benefit each of us and benefit society at large. But before we move on to that, we're waiting for questions from our students. Don't be shy, you just throw the question and our doctors will be happy to answer. Thank you. Good afternoon, sir. My name is Adrija Roy and I'm from Goa College of Pharmacy. So I have a question not so related to the pandemic but related to the skin. So in our Indian system, we tend to take bath every day. But in the Western society, we take bath, means not we, means they take bath mostly when they feel. Because in YouTube, I have seen that there is a doctor called Dr. Mike. And he tells us about that it's, the, it's not necessary to take bath every day because there are many proteins in our skin, especially like keratin, which may denaturate if we daily, uh, if we expose them to, suppose, any uh, soaps or anything else. But uh, as doctors said that we need to kill the bacteria which are present in the skin. So which is more important, to protect those oils and proteins or to kill these bacteria? If you kill 99.9% .9 of the bacteria, you are in trouble. 50% killing, okay, all right. Take bath, they are washed out. I mean, of the total quantity, say 1 million, and then you come down to 50 lakhs or something, that is okay. And good bacteria, bad bacteria, this thing, you concept you can understand. Antibiotics, if you are given orally, many times something like uh, uh, Neutralin B or YBAC, those things are also given as supplements so that the good bacteria in the GIT are not disturbed or not completely washed out. Same thing, skin externally and the endoderm inside, the, from mouth to the anus, the lining inside. Take it in the same sense and then, yes. Remember earlier, sadhus used to sit in, uh, for samadhi for days together and they never scratch, right? To possibly they did, they did eat something, but never scratched the way people scratch today, right? One old man came to me as a patient, 80 years old, fat, and Muslim fellow. Dr. Sahib, I saw kuch kijiye, meri BP ki taklif dur ho jaye. Ro chaam ko aad baje, kangi leke usse baitna padta hai, aadha ghante, आधा घंटा पाव स्क्रैच करना पड़ता है उसके बाद मुझे नींद आती है अपील इज मेरा क्या होता है होने दो लेट द ट्रबल टू माय वाइफ इमेजिन दैट स्क्रैचिंग फुल डे स्क्रैचिंग यू विल हैव टू अपॉइंट अ पर्सन टू स्क्रैच राइट दैट्स नॉट नॉट इजी यू कैन स्क्रैच योर बैक मेनी टाइम्स यू नीड कम अच्छा अगर हाथ लगो इफ योर वाइफ इज देयर अराउंड इट्स फाइन इफ नॉट व्हाट डू यू डू सो होल थिंग इज दैट द पीस द स्किन आल्सो इज पीसफुल if those bacteria are there, because they take care of the stagnant things, okay? 
And anyway, never grow fungus. Bacteria, fine. Fungus, take care. Other fungus, apart from ringworm, is simple thing as Shiba, Tinea versicolor. You must, everybody knows about it. Body full of Shiba, possibly the bacteria are not there. Think of that. And then I am going to be into research if there are any promoters. See this now, open challenge. I am going to be into research if there are any promoters that we will come out with a product to restore your bacteria. Done. That's it. Take this, take this bath, one, two, three baths, four baths. Bacteria are restored, certified fit, go. All right? Okay. Thank you, doctor. Are there any other questions from the students? Any doubts in your minds? Hello, sir. Myself, Sagar from Goa College of Pharmacy. So my question was, uh, because of this pandemic, we have been uh, taking online classes. And uh, this we take almost uh, from 9 to 5. Uh, so normally, as we use phone, it doesn't affect our eyes. And uh, what means, what is the best habit to use phone? Now we cannot deny it, but uh, which is the best habit to keep your eyes safe from the screen? Hi. So basically, can we hear that? Yeah. So basically, we were telling about the how to protect your eyes, right? So that's what I was telling, ki when our eyes no, have a power to change our focal length, right? We can see for a distance object, we can see for a near object. Means our eyes are doing some work, right? We can they are changing its focal point. Okay, our eyes are relaxed when when we are looking at a distance object more than six meters. Okay, six meters maybe from here till third or the fourth row, right? But when we are looking at a computer screen or when we are looking at a laptop screen, what we are doing, our eyes are straining for that distance. Our eyes are continuously working. The eye muscles are continuously working for that distance. Maybe for a laptop or a mobile and all, which continuously if we strain, right, the muscle will go into spasm it gives a plus power. So then there is a higher likely chance that you will get a number for a distance vision. Now how to protect it is either uh, you have to take frequent gaps. Okay, when you are on a computer screen or a mobile screen, uh, don't be on it for a computer continuous like maybe two hours, three hours, four hours. After every 20 minutes, so there is a rule called 20, 20, 20 rule. After every 20 minutes, take a gap of 20 seconds look through a window or look through a distance of more than 20 feet. 20 feet is 6 meters. So what that does is it relaxes the eye muscles. So when you focus at a distance object, the muscle will go into a little relaxation. The plus power which it gives, it will become a little less. So there is a very high likely chance that you won't get a number. And whenever, see, you all, you all are having computer classes and all, uh, we definitely can't avoid it. But we try to reduce the screen time maybe for computer usage for classes is okay the other recreational activities try to avoid your screen time and whenever you are on a mobile or a laptop or whatever it may be always use it in a bright white light never use it in a yellow light it strains your eyes much so that's the only thing and even if see now all of us we are having a number if y'all are having a number it's a continuous number 24 hour number if a patient is say more than 40 years old, they have a number for only reading. Okay, so there is a myth, some patients I get, they are telling, uh, young guys like you, they are telling, I have a number only for reading. No, it's absolutely not. A number for reading only comes after 40 years. So whatever number we are having, or whatever you all are having, is a number for 24 hours. Never use it for like only computer screen or only mobile screen. You all have to use it. If you all are having a refractive error, if you all have got corrected with the specs, that is a 24 hour number. From morning, if you are starting using it, it will be for distance vision also, near vision also. Okay, it's never a reading number for this age. Thank you, doctor. Any other questions from the students before we introduce and invite Mr. Dilawar Malade? 
Any other questions? We're open to take about a few more questions. Somebody from that side? Somebody from that row wants to ask a question, the last one on that end. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my, I'm myself, Rashi Ramdas Desai, and I'm from Goa College of Pharmacy. So my question is, as uh, Sir said now, uh, if we are using any mobile phones or anything we are doing, we need to do it in bright white light. So many a time in our classroom also when there is bright white light and we are attending lectures and now also in this hall when we are listening to the uh, talks uh, given by all the doctors, uh, there are uh, means many a times we face a lot of pressure and pain on our eyes and headache. Uh, then when I interacted with my friends also they told me the same thing. So is this also related to the same thing, like we need to uh, give, uh, take breaks in between and all those things? So uh, basically you are asking about the bright light, right? Yeah. So when, whenever you are on a computer screen and all, the bright light will definitely affect you. Now the main thing you are concerned about is the contrast. Okay, so now never... See now if I'm seeing your, if you are looking your, if there is a bright light behind you, I will definitely feel that contrast difficulty. So always when you are reading a laptop or a mobile and all, never the light should be from this side, the light should be from behind, okay. So there should be that contrast effect, okay. If you, if, so for example, if there is a bright screen behind, if there is something, so mobile or a laptop, maybe if you keep it here, it will be very difficult for you to read, right. So just the opposite side, if I keep it like this, that will be much better. One more thing you all can do is a blue filtered lenses have come up in market, okay? Or otherwise, even if you all have a spectacle number, you all can put that coat. It protects you from that harmful rays, okay? So that helps in protecting the eyes. One more thing is like uh, if you all are driving in a bright sun, some people complain that you all are having that glare, you can't face bright sunny light or whatever the light reflects from a car bonnet or maybe a sea surface and all. That's called glare. So the only way to protect is, is you have to use a polarized sunglasses whenever you are going out. Okay, a polarized sunglass is a one which polarizes all the rays. Okay, it decreases the intensity of light. So the bright light which is entering into the pupil and into the retina that gets filtered out. So that a bare minimum amount of light goes in. It protects the macula and the retina of course. Thank you, sir. And I hope all your questions are answered. We would now like to invite Mr. Dilawar Malade, the founder director of ADMS Marketing. They're here to tell us a little about the two products which are going to benefit society at large, sanitary pads and EVs. Yep. Uh, hello, everyone. Would like to uh, thank uh, all the doctors, KLE facility, and Robert sir to giving us opportunity right here. Our past, present, and future, a lucky future is right sitting here. It's an opportunity for every one of you to have a look at our products. The reason I'm saying lucky future, uh, when we were small, we were going to go to the sea, we used to see plastics all around. Then our directors, our founder, they came up with the idea why to use plastic for a sanitary napkins. When your children will come in this, in this world, they'll see sanitary napkins all around. It's not biodegradable, which you're using in the market. It's not only for ladies sitting out here, it's also for boys. We have sisters, we have uh, mothers, we have friends. We can always educate them to use something called as biodegradable product. Now, because of the uh, sanitary napkins that we uh, see in the market, we use for ourselves, it's not biodegradable, it's plastic, it's harmful for a long term for you, yourself, as well as for environment. So our company uh, called ADMS Marketing Private Limited came up with the idea to have these kind of uh, healthy product for our female, for our sisters across India, and we introduced a product called Thank You. So you can have a look at the first counter out there. Uh, we can explain you, show you the demo. We have our executives right there who sh sh share you the demos. Now, with this medical product, we have another medical product called EV bikes. Everyone have heard of EV bikes? All love bikes, all li like to ride bikes. 
कभी तो चुराया रहेगा डैडी का चाबी हाँ पेट्रोल भरने में तकलीफ हुआ रहेगा कि नहीं पेट्रोल कहाँ से भरू चाबी तो ले लिया बाइक ले लिया अभी पेट्रोल कहाँ से भरू मैं सो दीज ई वी बाइक्स आर द फ्यूचर फॉर यू एंड अस एज वेल एट द सेम टाइम हम लोग बूढ़े हो जाएंगे इतना पोल्यूशन में नहीं रह सकते अस्थमा ऑक्सीजन ऑलरेडी कोविड ने इतना सफर किया सब लोगों को प्रॉब्लम्स में आए सब लोग अपन नहीं आए तो अपने नेबर्स आए इट इज ऑल्सो बिकॉज ऑफ पोल्यूशन टू कंट्रोल दिस गवर्नमेंट हैज अप्रूव्ड लाइक देर आर मेनी कंपनीज आउट ऑफ विच वी आर स्टैंडिंग ऑन फिफ्थ पोजिशन इन इंडिया विद आर ई वी बाइक्स विथ फोर हंड्रेड एंड टेन शोरूम्स इन साउथ इंडिया वी आर ग्रोइंग टूवर्ड्स नॉर्थ इंडिया एज वेट एट द सेम टाइम Now Goa is one of our best territories because we have lot of youngsters around here. We have step into Goa with three showrooms at present. The best uh, uh, is Thivim and another one is uh, Madgao and Mapsa. So you can always have a look at our bikes at the showroom if today you don't get a chance, but it's a golden opportunity we can we can give you a test ride right at the entrance of this premises. Have you seen the e-bikes? Guys, hello. I know you guys are hungry. I'll just take one minute more. so uh, you must have received our brochures about the e bikes you can have a look if you love one of the bikes you can have a test ride outside the compound so you have a nice facility around and uh, just to have a little touch about how this thing happened would love to call upon our uh, founder and director mr dilawar malade to have 30 seconds or 1 minute of his uh, life journey into adms marketing sir please नमस्कार मैं सभी को कह रहा हूँ नमस्कार उतना तो बोलिए थैंक यू सर जो रॉबर्ट सर ने हमें एक डेमो दिखाने के लिए और जो हमारे कंपनी के बारे में बताने के लिए मौका दिया और शुक्रिया करना चाहता हूँ डॉक्टर साहब आप सभी को कि उन्हें हमें एक चांस दिया तो हम पहले सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट जॉब करते थे एज ए इलेक्ट्रिकल इंजीनियर तो उधर वो कंपनी में सैनिटरी पैड्स बनाते हम लोग और गवर्नमेंट को फ्री देते थे वो और दूसरा मालाडे माला एंड टैबलेट्स ये सब गवर्नमेंट को फ्री मिलता है ना सब कंपनी में बनाते हैं हम लोग तो वही आइडिया रिटायरमेंट होने के बाद वही आइडिया में आई एक हाइजीनिक प्रोडक्ट बनाना चाहिए इसलिए हमें हाइजीनिक प्रोडक्ट बनाया अभी ऑल इंडिया में वो सप्लाई हो रहा है उसी के साथ ई बनाया अभी रेगुलेशन पीरियड है पीरियड है अभी उसके साथ पेट्रोल की महंगाई और पोल्यूशन कंट्रोल ये तीनों चीज देख के हमने एक हाई स्पीड बाइक भी बनाई हाई स्पीड स्कूटर भी बनाई उसके साथ साथ ये मंथ में हमारा ऑटो भी आ रहा है उसके साथ ट्रैक्टर भी आ रहा है और 2024 में हमारा ई ई वी कार बनाने का प्लान चल रहा है तो आपने हमें मौका दिया इतना ही कहना चाहता हूँ थैंक यू थैंक यू गणेश और बाहर डेमो के लिए गाड़ी भी रखी है आप डेमो देख के गाड़ी अच्छी लगी तो ले लो आप और आप इस्तेमाल करके दूसरों को इस्तेमाल करने के चांस दे दो और पोल्यूशन कंट्रोल को कंट्रोल करने के लिए हमें सहयोग दे दो इतना ही कहना चाहता हूँ थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू मिस्टर दिलावर मलाडे फॉर एनलाइटिंग इज ऑन द टू प्रोडक्ट्स आई वुड नाउ लाइक टू कॉल फॉरवर्ड मिस्टर विनोद देशनूर पब्लिक रिलेशन ऑफिसर ऑफ के एल हॉस्पिटल they've got mementos for our doctors present with us who've taken the time off i would also like to call anandi da silva to hand over the mementos from on behalf of the management you can come you can give them we would also like to extend our sincere gratitude to our supporters goa Pharm pharmaceuticals manufacturers association rg stone urology and laparoscopy hospital delfinos nobits fitness studio r3 dr tinas ayurveda pharmacy and clinic to our sponsors a key sponsor kelis dr prabhakar kore hospital and medical research center imperial plus hospital a multi speciality hospital Dr Kedar's Hospital Panjim Goa Can we have a round of applause for all our doctors and we are very grateful to them for granting us the time We do understand that our doctors are very busy in practice 
but they still made it here today for the Expo, for the second day of the Expo 2022. And I'm sure their experiences have truly enlightened us, solved a lot of our doubts that we had, a lot of queries that we carried on with us till today. We would like to close this afternoon program with an announcement of lunch. There has been lunch arranged for each and every one of you, which is right outside in the cafeteria, so please do not leave without lunch. We would like you all to assemble again for the evening program. Thank you once again for joining in, and thank you for being a part of today morning's event. Thank you.